Pluto was first thought to be the ninth planet in our solar system, discovered in 1930 as part of the Kuiper Belt, a rock and debris strewn region in the outer part of our solar system. Its largest object yet found in the Kuiper Belt is only actually the tenth largest planetary type object in our solar system, being slightly smaller than Eris, so along with Eris, Ceres and a few others, it's now in the category of dwarf planet. The reason why it originally was classified as a planet was that early estimates of the mass of Pluto put it similar to that of Earth, whereas the latest estimates put it about a quarter of one percent of that of Earth. Now Pluto orbits the Sun at such a great distance that it will take nearly 250 years for it to complete an entire orbit of the Sun. And since its discovery, it still hasn't even completed half an orbit. Now, possibly due to the distance from the Sun and other planetary bodies, Pluto has a collection of large moons relative to the size of Pluto, all with names relating to the Greek myths of the underworld. Most notably of these is Charon, which if scaled up would be nearly ten times the mass of our own moon. In fact, there's a question of whether it should be said to be in orbit around Pluto at all, or whether the pair should be actually considered to be kind of a binary system. And shortly we'll get more information from both Pluto and Charon as the New Horizons probe does a fly past. However, even though the craft is packed with scientific instruments, it's akin to trying to take a photograph of a railway station from the window of an express train as it thunders past. We won't get as much information as if we actually had a probe land on Pluto itself. It's likely that Pluto has many more moons than we currently know about, and these are likely to be discovered as a fly past, as well as the remote possibility that Pluto may have some minor rings around it. But for the planet itself, we'll get an accurate measurement of its diameter and samples of the high atmosphere. But most importantly, there will be two overlapping maps of the surface of both Charon and Pluto. Since these maps will be taken from both the Long Range Reconnaissance Imager and the Multispectral Visual Imaging Camera, the imaging will be repeated, and the difference between the images can be compared to see if there's actually any change in the surface conditions of both, both of these bodies. This will mean that we can actually see if the surface is active in any way, say either due to weather or volcanic activity of some description. And no matter what the outcome, it's likely that New Horizons may spark a new interest in space much in the same way as the Voyager program did. Hopefully that's going to be the case, and hopefully we get much more information from this probe.